What is up guys? My name is McKenzie and this is week two of my 12 and 12 design to code challenge. So last week we designed an agency website. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, be sure to click right here and uh, go check that out. So today we are going to take that PSD and turn it into the front end code. So let's jump on the computer and get going. Okay guys, so we are going to turn this design into the front end code. So I've already done a bit of setup on my desktop, I created a super mega awesome directory. And then inside of Sublime, I opened that up and I created um, a few folders. So we have the index.html file, and I went ahead and added the HTML structure with the title. I added a link to the normalize.css uh, file. Uh, basically, that's a uh, browser reset. Uh, we are linking to the uh, styles.css and I set up typekit so I can use the branding grotesque font inside of this demo. Note that this uh, code will not work for you. Uh, if you want to use the typekit, you will need to set up your own account and use your own embed code because I will be uh, deleting this kit after I uh, finish this demo. All right, one other thing to note is that I am using CodeKit to uh, compile the SCSS that we are writing in to the CSS. So we are going to write all of our styles in the SCSS and then it's going to compile into a compressed uh, .css file where we will import that into the HTML file. So let's begin. How I'm going to go about this is we're going to do each section uh, one by one. We're going to start with the banner, then we're going to move on to the services, then we are going to do the our work section. So one thing to note is I'm not going to actually be coding the slideshow functionality of the our work section just because it's a bit outside the scope of this tutorial, but we will still be implementing uh, the actual design. And then we will move on to the get in touch and the footer section. So let's begin with the banner. So I'm going to just uh, minimize all of that stuff. Let's see. So back in sublime text, we have all of this set up. What I want to do is create the HTML structure for this banner section. All right, so let's start by, uh, let's move this over. Here we go. So I'm going to create a section tag with the ID of a uh, banner. Then inside of that, let's uh, create a wrapper tag or a div with the class of wrapper. Then inside of there, we have, let's see, we have the uh, header with the logo and navigation. Then we have the main content with the title, subtitle, and buttons. So what we want to do is do a header tag. Then inside of here, let's create a P tag with the ID of logo. Then inside of here, we'll say super mega awesome. And then we also have the navigation. So let's create a nav tag and we have four links. So let's do a times four. And uh, I will just stub these out, let's say home, stub it out. Uh, what was the next one? Portfolio. Services. And get in touch. And one thing to note is to do that, I am using uh, something called Emmet, which if you go to emmet.io, you can uh, definitely check that out. Emmet speeds up your workflow by allowing you to do stuff like, uh, let's say, I want a UL with uh, eight LI items inside of it. And inside of each LI, I want an href. And you just uh, type that out, hit tab, and it uh, outputs all of the code for you. And all you have to do is just fill in the, the various spots. It is absolutely fantastic. I definitely recommend checking that out. So let me undo that. OK, and let's go back to Chrome and save this. And we can see the logo and the nav items are showing up. Perfect. So outside of the header, let's create a div with the content uh, class. Then we also have a title. So let's make an H1 with the title class. And let's see, go back to Photoshop. I'm just going to copy this and the subtitle. Let's put that in H2 and say dot subtitle. And then we have two buttons. So uh, when we go to style this, we're going to need a wrapper around the buttons to make it so we can uh, center the buttons. So let's do a class with button wrapper or a div with class button wrapper. Then we'll do two uh, A tags and we'll make one with button and button underscore highlight. 
and we'll stub that out and we'll say learn more and then we'll do another one with button class and a button secondary and we'll stub that out and we'll say play video all right let's save that go back cool the title subtitle and buttons are showing up perfect all right so the next thing we want to do is get this background image uh, saved so we can uh, start styling this so let's uh, hide everything in Photoshop except for the background then I'm gonna press M to grab the marquee tool select that banner and crop that and then I'm going to do a save as and let's see 1.571 megabytes is far too large let's change it to jpeg let's see let me zoom out straight up lower the quality a bit let's put it about 70 that gets us down to 262.5 kilobytes so i'll save that let's see it's on my desktop super mega awesome let's uh create a new directory or a new folder inside of here called images create and then we will save this image as banner underscore background dot jpg perfect now i'm going to undo that crop that we did and show everything again perfect okay let's go and go back to chrome so next thing we need to do is start styling so i'm going to open up the uh, styles.scss remember that's going to compile into the styles.css that's going to be imported into our html file so I'm going to um, open these up side by side. We'll work with the styles and the HTML so we can see both at the same time. Okay, so we have the ID of banner. So let's select that. So for the banner, we want the background image. So let's do a background image URL. Then we will go uh, dot dot slash images and then banner underscore background dot JPG. And then we also want background repeat, no repeat. And then we also want background size to be cover. That way it fills up the whole div. So let's save that. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is uh, set up the wrapper. So I don't want this to go all the way to the very edge of the div or the viewport. So let's uh. Let's first uh, add some comments to make a note of where everything's at. I'll say uh, global styles. Copy that and let's do banner styles. Okay, then let's do a dot wrapper because remember inside of our section with the idea of banner, we have the dot wrapper class. Let's define what that is. All right, so let's make the wrapper have a width of 1440 pixels and we'll do a max width of 90% uh, and we'll do a margin of zero and auto. So basically this will make it 1440 pixels and if it's below 1440, it will default to 90%. So let's see, the next thing, let's go back to our design. We have this uh, logo and navigation. Let's start with the uh, logo. So uh, first off, let's select the header. We want some padding in there. So let's do two rem and zero. Perfect. Now, next we want the ID of logo. So let's do, let's change the color to white. Um, here I'm using a variable. Uh, we need to define what that variable is. In addition to this nesting that we were doing, uh, variables and mix-ins are one of the great things about uh, SCSS and one of the reasons I love using it. So let's uh, define what those variables are. Variables, okay. So I'm going to define what the white, and that's gonna be zero, or pound FFF FFF let's also make some other variables so we are gonna have right open everything up we're gonna have this main green so we can call this one highlight uh, we will also have this background gray color so let me select that 
let's say gray background. Then we also have this uh, gray copy color. So let me select that. Gray copy. Then we have this uh, dark gray color. So let's do dark gray. And I believe that is all the main ones. We might have a few other ones. Uh, the only other ones that I can think would be uh, this color and this uh, button color, but both of those will only be used once. So I don't think we need to set up variables for those. Okay, so let's see. Let me get rid of that other stuff. Let's go back to Chrome and Sublime. So we'll save the color as white. Uh, let's make the font weight of 700, so it's bold. Uh, let's make the font size, let's say 1. Point, sorry, 1.35 rem. Uh, let's float it to the left and um, as you, if you inspect the element right here, go to Chrome, you can see that it already has a margin on it by default of uh, 1M. So uh, let's remove that margin so it doesn't mess with the alignment of our navigation. So if I save that, perfect. So it's uh, all good, except uh, we are not using the brand and grotesque font just yet. Let's uh, go up to the global styles and I'm gonna do body, font, family, and let's say Brandon Grotesque. And let's uh, fall back to Helvetica and then uh, let's do a sans serif. Much better. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, in our design though, on the logo we have uh, bold font and then this is the regular font the mega and then the awesome is bold as well so what we can do for that is go inside of the p tag around the mega let's add a span close that save it then inside of the logo let's add span and say font weight is 400. perfect Okay, so let's define what the uh, navigation should be. So first off, let's get out of the logo. And let me add some space so it's easier to see. All right, so let's uh, select the nav. Then the entire nav, we're gonna float to the right. Perfect. Now let's select the A tags inside the nav. Let's make the color white. Uh, let's do font weight of 700. Let's do a text decoration of none. So the underline goes away. And then let's add a margin left of 2 rem. Perfect. Okay, so next let's uh, style the content. So I'm going to do dot content. Let's add some padding here. Let's do 2 rem zero on the bottom. And then if we go back to our design, uh, we are going to need a bit more padding on the bottom to make up for the fact that the boxes are going to come up, um, up over the banner. So let's do two rem, zero, six rem, zero. Perfect. Okay, so inside of the content, let's select the dot title. Actually, let's select the dot title and the dot subtitle. Uh, both of these, we're going to want the color to be white. Uh, we also want the text align to be centered. Then the title, we want the font size to be pretty large. So let's do 3.5 rem. And uh, let's uh, also remove the, the margin that the uh, H1 art has by default. Cool. So now let's select the subtitle. Uh, we want the font weight to be regular. So let's do font weight 400. Let's make the font size a bit smaller, so 1.35 rem. And then in our design, we have it so the subtitle does not go the full width. So uh, to do that, let's go back to Chrome. 
Let's make the width of this 500 pixels. Do a margin of zero auto, uh, but we also want a margin on the bottom to push down the button. So let's do zero auto, two rem auto. And then let's change the line height a bit. Let's make it 1.75, 1.75. Perfect. Okay. So now we need to style the buttons. First off, let's uh, select the button wrapper. And all we need to do on here is margin or text line center. And that center is the buttons here. And then I also want to add some margin on top and bottom of the wrapper itself. Margin, let's do three rem zero. Okay, so now uh, since we are going to be using the button styles in more than just the banner, let's go up to the global styles below the wrapper. Let's define what the button is. So inside the button class, we're going to add all the generic styles. So let's do border none, outline none. Uh, this is just a few fixes for uh, like IE and such. Let's do border radius. Uh, let's do two rem, that way it's a half circle. Let's make the padding be, let's try 0.5 rem and let's try three rem. And then font weight will do bold, so 700. Let's make the color of the text be white. And then we'll do text decoration none to remove the underline and text align center. All right, so that fixes everything except we want the background. So uh, we have the button highlight and button secondary classes. So let's do button highlight, and that's going to be a background to highlight variable. And then we also have the button secondary. And if we go back to our design, you can see it's a slightly transparent white. So to do that, we need to do an RGBA color. So let's do background uh, RGBA. So 250, 250, 250, that's pure white. And then we'll change the transparent or opacity. Uh, let's do, let's try 35.35. Perfect. Okay, so now you can see the buttons are uh, bumping up right against each other. So inside of the banner, uh, let's go inside of the button wrap class, select the button. And then let's just add some margin on either side. We don't want very much. So let's do zero on top and bottom and let's try 0.75 RAM on either side. That looks perfect. Uh, I feel like the button should be slightly larger. So let's try a padding of six RAM or 0.6 RAM, maybe 0.35. There we go. That looks good to me. Beautiful. All right. And then the last thing is we also have a button on the get in touch. So let's uh, define what that is. So back in our HTML file, what we need to do is on the href, let's add a class and say button. That way it has the same styles and then button, uh, let's do secondary, but we also want a button small class. So if we save that, it will add these styles from the button and button secondary. Uh, but the button small, what I want to do is uh, shrink the padding a bit so it's not as large. And I'll do padding, let's try 0.3 rem and 1.5 rem. Perfect. That looks, that looks great. Okay, so the only other thing we are missing is this arrow down. For now, we are going to skip that. Uh, and we will probably tweak the padding and stuff a bit. Actually, I'm going to do that now. Uh, you can see the spacing should be a bit larger. So let me see. The content, maybe let's do 4 RAM and 8 RAM. Let's just try that. We can always change it later if we want. Cool. So next we want to style these blocks. So let's jump back into sublime text and uh, let's copy the banner styles uh, comment Add that below and let's change this to services. Then we need to select, 
Well, we need to write the HTML first. So let's go up above. After the closing section tag, let's uh, add a new tag, uh, section tag with the ID of services. Then again, inside of here, let's do a wrapper. And let's see, so for each one, we have uh, each individual service that we offer. All three of these are gonna have the same styles. And then we will need to code these lines as well. So let's do, so inside of the wrapper, let's do a dot service class. Then inside of here, let's add an H3 tag for the title and I'll say branding. Then under there, we have the subtitle. Uh, let's add that in a P tag. Let me copy that and paste. Perfect. And then we also have uh, the button. So I'm going to do an A tag with the class of button, button highlight, highlight, and, and then we'll do button small because in our design, uh, we have the buttons not as large as the uh, called action buttons above. So let's hit tab, we'll stub that out, and then I'm going to say learn more. Then what I'm going to do is simply copy this and paste it twice more. Then let's change this to UI slash UX design and the last one to development. Development. Okay. So if we go to Chrome, you can see that's showing up. Perfect. So let's start styling this. First, let's select the services ID. What we want to do is change the background to uh, the gray background. Then let's add some padding inside of here. Let's do two rem on top, zero on the side. And then uh, just the same as before, back in our design, uh, we're gonna need more padding on the bottom to make up for these lines than we do on the top. So let's do two rem, um, let's do 6.5 rem and zero. And then let's make this a position relative. And the reason we're doing that is because we're gonna make absolute positioned uh, pseudo elements for the lines that are supposed to guide your eye down. Okay, so now let's select the dot service, the individual box. So let's make a background of white. The width we are gonna do 31%. Then we are going to float them all to the left. Let's do a margin. So on top, we're gonna to do negative five rem. Um, on the side, we're gonna do 1%. We're gonna do zero on the bottom and 1% on the left. And that's gonna bring the boxes up uh, to overlay over the banner. Then we want some padding in there. So let's do three rem on the top and bottom and 2.5% uh, on either side. Then let's do text align center and uh, let's do position relative as well. And then finally, uh, the box shadow. Back in Photoshop, we can do this cool thing. If you select a layer and you right click on it, you can copy the CSS. Uh, we only want the box shadow, but it will give us everything. So what I'm gonna do is just delete everything but the box shadow. All right, and we also need to copy that and add it in twice more. And we're gonna do WebKit to add some browser re uh, prefixes. So WebKit and Moz. So save that. And if we go back to Chrome, uh, you can see everything's almost there. So the reason we are having this issue is because each box is 31% uh, plus 1% on either side for the margin plus uh, 2.5 percent on either side for the padding and all that adds up to over 100 percent which causes it to break but what we can do is make it so the padding doesn't affect the actual width and to do that let's go up to the global styles let's do star and we're going to do box sizing border box if we save that and go back you can see everything is in line as it should be perfect Okay, so let's next style the H3 tag. So let's do H3. Then we want to get rid of the margin. So let's do margin zero. Let's make a font size of 1.5 rem to make it slightly larger. And let's change the color to the 
dark gray color. Then the P tag, let's um, select that and let's make a margin of zero, zero, two rem on the bottom and zero on the left. Then let's do the color of dark gray as well. And then the button, so let's select dot button. What we wanna do is uh, just make the padding slightly larger than the small button class. So I'm gonna change the padding to 0.5 rem on top and bottom and two rem on either side. So save that and go back to Chrome. That's looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm noticing that I missed was the border radius. So below the box shadow, let's add border radius. And I'm gonna do 0.35 rem. Beautiful. Okay, so one issue we are having is it, you'll notice that the background is coming up above where the where it should be and that is because all of these are floated left that means they are out of the flow of the document so what we can do to uh, fix that is uh, add a clear fix we are going to be adding a clear fix on multiple different places so to do that let's add it to the global styles so below the button what we can do is do dot cf after and dot cf before Let's do content equals space, and then we'll do display of table. And then we also want dot clear fix after, and we'll do clear both. So we can save that. It's not gonna do anything just yet, but if we go up to the services uh, section tag and we add a class of dot CF, and then we save that and go back to Chrome, you can see that the background now comes all the way down as it should with the padding applied to it. Beautiful. Okay, so next, let's go back to our design. We have these three lines uh, coming down. We need to code. So how we're gonna do that is with CSS pseudo elements. So let's go back to Sublime and Chrome. And then inside of the, whoops, not the banner, the dot service class, Let's add a um, and colon after. All right, so let's do content, let's quote space. Then we'll position these at absolute, absolute. Then let's make it left of 50%. Let's make it bottom of negative 50 pixels. We're gonna make it a height of 50 pixels. And then we're gonna do a border left of two pixels solid and then if we go back to Photoshop and grab that line color, paste that in, then we'll save that and go back to Chrome, you can see that these lines are now showing up. That is absolutely perfect. Next, we need to add the line that connects the three of them together. So for that, we are gonna add a pseudo element on the uh, services div. So. Um, since we already have the clear fix on here, uh, we can't use the after. So instead of that, uh, let's go outside of the dot service uh, class and let's do an and before. So what we wanna do is uh, the same as most of this. So I'm just gonna copy all of that for now. And a few things are gonna change. Let's do a bottom of 54 pixels, uh, not negative, just uh, 54. We're gonna do left of 50% like the same. Let's remove the height. And instead of a border left, we're gonna do a border top. And then we also need a width. Let's do 59.5%. And let's do a margin left to bring it back of 30. 0.1%. So save that. Go take a look. All right, so that is okay. So margin left, I need to do negative 30.1. Perfect. So that is uh, connecting the three of them. The last thing we need to do is have this middle section uh, come down all the way to the end of this div. So what I can do is on the service div, I'm going to add a another class called middle on just the middle one and then above the and before 
I'm going to do dot middle. Then let's select the uh, and colon after. Then we are simply going to change the bottom to a negative 105 pixels and the height to uh, 105 pixels. There we go. That looks fantastic. All right, so let's move on to the our work section. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Let's minimize these, open up the previous work folder. Okay, so first I'm going to select these logos, crop those and export them. So I'm gonna hit C and crop. And then I'm going to remove the background colors, uh, just hide those layers and do a save as. Uh, let's do a PNG-24 with the transparency on and it's only 16.69 kilobytes. That's uh, pretty good. All right, so let's save that. And we will save this as logos.png. Then I will undo uh, that crop. Then the next thing is we need these images. So how I'm gonna do this is, let's see. I'm going to disable the layer mask. Then I'm going to select this image and Briefly, I'm going to remove the mask from it. Let me select the crop tool or the marquee tool. And I'm simply going to select part of the image, hit crop. Then let's uh, export that image. And I'm going to uh, remove the transparency. I'll save this as a JPEG instead. And let's bump up the quality a bit. 85 looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to save this and then I am just going to fast forward through the other ones so you guys don't have to watch me uh, save those out, but I will uh, join you back once that is all complete. Okay, so now that that is done, we should be good to start coding this section. So I am going to open up uh, the HTML file again. Below the closing section tag, let's add a, another section with the ID of uh, past work. All right, then inside of here, let's add a div with the wrapper class. Then inside of the wrapper, first let's do an H2 tag uh, and say our work. Then below that, we need an image tag and let's uh, link to the uh, logos image. So I'm going to do Go into the images directory and select logos.png. Uh, I'm going to say pass clients in the alt tag. Then below that, let's do a UL tag with the ID of slider. And then I'm going to do three LIs. So LI times three. And then inside of there, I'm going to do an image tag. Perfect. So let's see, do images, and then I'm going to select the past work, uh, WordPress image.jpg. I'll do images slash past work amazon.jpg. Images slash past work Netflix. JPG. And then let me save that. Let's uh, see what it did in Chrome. All right, so we have the our work, we have the logos, and we have each of the images. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and add some styles. First, I'm going to select the comment. Let's add a new one of those and say past work. Then inside of here, let's select the past work div. This is going to have a background with the dark gray variable. Let's add a padding. Let's do five RAM on top, zero, and then we're gonna do a big 25 RAM on the bottom. That way, when we, uh, if we look at our design, that way there's enough space for our images to show up. Uh, these are gonna be absolutely positioned. So without the padding on the bottom, uh, it would show up above where it should be. So let's go back to Sublime. I'm also going to do text align center. Let's do a position of relative. And we're gonna do overflow of hidden. That way 
our box shadow on the images won't show up over the uh, outside of the div. So for the title, let's do dot title and let's change the color to white. Let's change the font size to 2.5 rem and the margin, we're gonna remove it from the top right. Uh, let's do the bottom as, uh, let's try 0.75 rem and zero. So let's save that and go make sure it's uh, working good. All right, so it is except for the fact that we forgot to add the uh, dot .title class on the H2. So let's do title, there we go, much better. Uh, while we're in here, let's also add a class to the uh, image with logos. So let's do class of logos and then save that. And if we go to uh, the past work styles, let's do dot logos. Let's add a width of 750 pixels and a max width of 95%. So that makes it a bit smaller. Okay, so next we need to style the slider. So the slider is in a UL with the ID of slider. So I'm going to select the slider ID. Then first I'm gonna do list style of none on the actual slider. That will remove the bullet points. And then on the LIs, uh, is where we're gonna do a lot of the work. Let's do a width of 600 pixels. So the LI is going to act as our wrapper uh, for the images themselves. And then the image within the wrapper, within the LI, we are going to have it go full width. So let's do width of 600 pixels. We're gonna do a height of 375 pixels. Let's do overflow of hidden. That way it will crop uh, the excess. So the image will go full width up to the 600 pixels. Then it will uh, crop anything past the 375 pixel height. Let's do a background color of uh, white. We're gonna do a box shadow of, I'm not quite sure. Let me, let me grab the rectangle. I'm going to right click, copy the CSS. Then let's go back and paste that in. So I only need the box shadow. Let's remove everything else. Okay. And then we also need the WebKit version and the Moz. All right. Then each of these are going to be position absolute. We're gonna do a Z index of three on the first one, then we'll change the other ones. That's how we're gonna get the stacked effect. And then we're simply gonna do a border radius of 0.35 on the 0.35 rem on the top left and 0.35 on the top right, and then zero and zero for the bottom left and the bottom right. So let's save that, go back to Chrome, take a look. All right, so that is okay for now. Obviously we need to tweak that a bit. So what we're gonna do is select the image inside of the LI, do width of 100%. So now if we go back, you can see we see the actual image and it's not all being cropped, perfect. So outside of the image tag, what we need to do is individually select each image. So we can do that by doing and colon nth, whoops, and colon nth dash child, and we're gonna select the first one uh, we're going to select each of these individually. Let's do bottom of negative 37 pixels, uh, left of zero. And we are going to scale this one down. So we're going to do transform, scale, and then let's do 0.8 and 0.8. And then I'm going to copy that, do it twice more. And we need the WebKit and the Moz version. And then we're gonna make the Z index on this one too, so it's behind the main one. All right, so you can see the WordPress one kind of showing up there. Let's uh, change number two. So we'll do and nth child number two. So let's do left of 50%, uh, a margin margin, margin, left of negative, uh, negative 300 pixels. So the reason we're doing negative 300 pixels is because the width of this is 600, so half of that is 
300, so that would bring it back to center. Uh, let's do a Z index of four to bring it on top of everything, and let's say bottom zero. Then let's go ahead and do the third one as well. This is going to be almost the same as the second, except the left uh, we're gonna change to right of zero. So save that and go back and everything is showing up perfect. The only thing that still needs to happen is the border radius is not quite working. So, oh, I did 3.5 rem. It should be 0 0.35, 0 0.35. Let me try that, see if it makes the difference, which it does not. Hmm. Oh, duh, 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 duh. You probably noticed that already, but it's a border radius, not border. Okay, so if I save that, there we go. So we got the slight border radius. Perfect. Okay, so back in our design, we have these three navigation dots. Let's code those. So to do that, uh, first, let's create another UL inside of the HTML. We're going to do UL, and I'll say slider underscore button, and then... We're gonna have three A tags, A times three, and then inside of there, we're gonna do an LI tag, perfect. So the LI tag, uh, we're not actually gonna put anything in there, let's just stub these out. And then the first one, on the LI, let's add a class of current. That way we can highlight it. Okay, so let's save that. And you can see back in Chrome, we just have these three dots. So uh, above the slider, styles let's add a slider buttons so i'm going to do a list style of none padding of zero a margin of two rem and zero then let's select the li we're going to make the width of nine pixels the height of the same nine pixels let's do margin of zero on top and bottom 0.5 rem on either side let's make these position relative border radius of 100% to make it a full circle. We're going to do a display of inline block, background color. Um, let's go back to Photoshop and select that color. I don't think we have a variable for it. And then we are going to do transition. Let's do background, background at 0.4s. 0.4 seconds, and we're going to do ease in dash out. That way, when we hover over it, let's do and hover, we can change the background to that green color. And then outside of the li, let's do dot current. Whoops. And then we will change the background color to the green variable. So let's save that. Oh, whoops, not green. Uh, both of these would be highlight. So now if we go back to Chrome and refresh, everything is looking good. And when we hover over, we get the transition to the green color. Perfect. So this is looking fantastic. Let's move on to uh, the final CTA and the footer. So these are pretty simple. All we need to do is style the background the title, subtitle, and the button, and then the footer. So let's do that. Back inside of the HTML, outside of the section tag, let's create another section with the ID of contact, uh, and we'll do a wrapper inside of that. Then in here, let's do an H2 with the title class. I'll say get in touch. Then I'm going to go back to Photoshop, select the dummy text, and put that in a p tag with the subtitle class and then below that we have the button so i'm going to do an a tag with the button class button uh, highlight and let's do another one that we haven't styled yet a button large to make this one slightly larger and then we'll sub it out and we'll just say learn more or no we'll say uh, contact us i'm sorry Sweet. And then while we are here, let's do a footer, 
and inside of here we're going to do a p tag with the copyright class and let's just simply copy that paste it in uh, let's change this copyright symbol to and uh, copy colon or semicolon that's the html version of that and then the mckinsey child would be a link so let's uh, add a stubbed out link there so we save that and go back to chrome perfect so one thing I just noticed is we have this underline on the the buttons. Um, I believe what we can do to fix that is under the slider buttons, let's uh, do an A text decoration of none. Perfect. So that removes that. Awesome. Okay, so let's finish styling this page. So the get in touch or the contact section. Let's first copy this um, content or the comment, change past work to contact. So that's more spacing in there. All right, so what we want to do first is select the content ID or contact ID. Let's make the background that uh, gray background color. Let's add some padding. Let's do 5 rem on top and 0. Then let's do a text align of center. Then let's select the title. Let's do font size of 2.5 rem. Color of dark gray. Then let's remove the margin. Then outside of here, let's do a subtitle. Uh, this one's going to be a bit larger than the other one. So let's do a font size of 1.5 rem. Let's do a color of copy or gray copy. I'm sorry. We're going to do a width of 600 pixels. That way it doesn't take up the entire thing. A max width of 100%. We're going to do a display of block. And then let's do a margin zero auto. That way it's centered. And then 4M on the bottom and auto. So that should be good. Let me take a look. Save that. Go back to Chrome. That looks pretty good except for the button. So what I want to do to fix that is we need to define what that button large style is. So let's go up to the global styles. Under the button small, let's add a button large. And for this, we're going to change the padding uh, to 1 RAM and let's do 5 RAM on either side. And let's change the font size to 1.35 RAM. Go back to Chrome. That looks good. One issue I'm noticing, though, is um, because of the button, how the padding works is it pushes from the edge of the text and not the edge of the button. So it appears like there's less space on the bottom than there is on the top. So to fix that, let's simply add more padding on the bottom. So let's try, let's do six rem on the top. And well, let's try eight rem. Perfect. That looks good. All right, and let's finally uh, style the footer. So I'm gonna select the footer. Let's add some padding of 1 rem and 0. Then I'm going to select the copyright. Let's do text align center. We're going to do a font weight 700 to make it bold. And we're going to change the color to the gray copy color. And then inside of here, we have that A tag. And what we want to do is change that color to green. And let's say text decoration, none. Ah, damn. Uh, keep forgetting the green is highlight. There we go. Beautiful. So we have the top banner all good. Then we have the services um, with the lines that lead your eye to the R work section. And then finally, we have the get in touch. One thing I noticed that we are missing is the arrows down. So what I'm going to do is uh, export that as a PNG. Let me remove the backgrounds. Let's do PNG 
with the transparency and we will save that as arrows down. Let me undo that. Okay, so let's go back to our HTML inside the banner. Let's see, right outside of the button wrapper, let's add that image. So I'm gonna do image source and we're gonna go to images slash button or er, arrows down dot png. I'm gonna say see more as a class, or I mean alt, and then add a class of C underscore more. Then inside of the banner styles, let's go up. Let's see, inside of the content, but below the buttons wrapper, let's do see more. And to position that in the center, let's uh, position it absolute. Then let's do left of 50%, and then a margin left of a uh, negative 13 pixels, which is half of the width. And then let's do bottom of 105 pixels. So I believe that might work, I might not, I'm not sure. Okay, so it's not showing up and that is because the background banner needs to be position relative because that is positioned absolute. Okay, so now that is showing up in the center, it's not quite perfectly centered. So what we can do is just tweak that a bit. Margin left, um, 15, negative 15 pixels looks good. And let's do 90 pixels on the bottom. All right, one last thing I wanna do before we finish up is uh, you can see the text isn't super crisp in Chrome. And that is because uh, we want to add some font smoothing. So let's do WebKit font-smoothing to the body tag. And we're gonna do anti-aliased. So save that, go back, and you can see everything just smooths out a bit and it makes the text uh, a bit clearer to read. Beautiful. So this is looking awesome, guys. Okay, guys, that is all for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to pick up the source files from this tutorial, uh, be sure to visit mckinseychild.me slash week two. I'll be sure to also add the link in the description below. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe below and join me next week when I design another UI. See ya.